Hello, I'm Ed Raby, otherwise known as the Rabbit Atheist, a former pastor turned atheist, now a compassionate anti-theist. Welcome to my channel. Feel free to like or dislike the video as you see fit, so feel free to hit those buttons. Feel free to comment below, and I would appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel and hit your notification bell for more content as it is released. You're also free to share my videos as much as you like. Uh, the purpose of this channel is educational, in particular uh, education in related to atheist and deconversion issues from religion. Uh, in particular, I often deal with biblical and theological issues related to Christianity uh, because that was my tradition. Uh, today is a Friday video, and uh, I think this is week 43. Oh my God, nine more weeks and it'll be a whole year of the channel. Um, I want to thank everybody uh, right at the outset for subscribing. We've had a few new subscribers the last few days. Thanks for joining. I appreciate you being here. We're up to 48, I think. Getting very close to the 50 mark. Uh, I said it as my first goal of this channel was to get to 100 subscribers, and I'm almost halfway there. Uh, so, you know, people ask me sometimes what they can do to help that. Well, share my videos, give them to other people that, you know, uh, you know, share them to friends, uh, you know, like and subscribe. So the YouTube algorithm goes, hey, you know, the, the people like what this guy's doing. So, you know, just just keep doing what you're doing. And I'm sure eventually it'll grow uh, organically, as most of these things on the Internet do. Uh, Friday videos are about answering questions and comments and, and such. And so I'm kind of focused on that today, uh, but uh, gotta go back. I only have about three comments this last week, and part of that's my fault. I have not produced a lot of content lately that's uh, original. I did do some rabid ramblings for Monday. I appreciate the, uh, the the feedback and all that stuff. Um, the comment I have to go back to, and this is going to take the least amount of time to deal with, uh, John Baptiste, when I responded and. Uh, week 41 uh, kind of uh, hit the same comment again that I responded to then. Uh, I'm going to basically say you can look at my uh, week 41 and week 42 videos. I believe I responded to that comment already. And uh, just to say, you know, there uh, I do have a reaction to what I call the cut and paste Christians that basically have their comments in the can and they just cut and paste and, you know, put it back on there again. Uh, that comment was given to me twice and it's exactly the same. So can it, I'm going to make a statement about such cut and paste Christians. Um, when you're cutting and pasting somebody else's thoughts or you're cutting and pasting a brilliant thought that you think you've had, there's a couple of things you're doing. Number one, you're not being very intellectually honest and addressing whether or not that answer actually answers the question. I've a lot of Christians um, just accept the arguments for the existence of God and they never bother to question those arguments, whether or not they're valid or whether or not they beg the question, which most of them do. They beg the question. Uh, they automatically assume God exists or they assume something else. I think like the moral argument assumes not only the existence of God, it assumes the existence of objective morality, which it doesn't bother to prove. So, you know, most of the cosmological argument or the, you know, other arguments for the existence of God all fail uh, on the grounds that they, they beg the question or they beg the question about, they assume facts, not in evidence uh, in some cases. So they're an argument from ignorance or whatever. And once I began to realize that as an atheist, um, I also began to realize that a lot of what I was doing was just accepting answers that other Christians have given and other apologists have given at face value without really digging into deep to, into them. I became an atheist in large part uh, from digging a little bit deeper into these arguments that Christians, these so-called great Christian apologists have, and suddenly realizing that they're absolutely full of shit, um, that those arguments all fail uh, in large part and very, very big. So, uh, and then <clears throat> the other aspect of a cut and paste Christian when they do this, you're basically telling me that you don't give a shit enough about me as a person to actually stop and listen to what I'm saying. I've had to deal with this on this channel at least three or four times. And, you know, people come by here every three months, drop the same comment that they dropped three months ago that I've already dealt with. And I just don't deal with it again. Um, if you're, if you don't have enough belief 
in yourself to listen to what I'm saying and come up with truly genuine responses to me. I just find that disingenuine. Okay. Uh, I'm not name calling there, but maybe I'm wrong about you. Maybe you are being genuine. You just think, oh, there's so many atheists out there. I just got to win them all. Your best tactic actually would be to start listening to a few atheists, addressing their concerns and questions directly, and spending a lot more time doing that. Uh, I think that's probably a little bit more productive uh, use of your time. And also quit assuming that your arguments are airtight and start to attack them yourself. As an atheist, whenever I have an, uh, an idea that's humanistic or evolutionaristic, I, I do look at that argument and ask the question of whether or not it's worth the shit. Uh, I do that a lot. So, um, you know, part of being different as an atheist, like I'm, I'm a libertarian atheist. A lot of atheists head to the liberal side of the aisle because in my opinion, they just substitute government in the place of, that God used to have. And they have a religious devotion to government. Um, that's very similar to religious devotion to God, if you ask me. And I question the value of both God and government, um, and question them very highly. The only difference I have as a libertarian atheist is I can actually prove government exists, but I look at it and say, yeah, just because we make decisions as groups doesn't make that they're good decisions and they're not always good for everybody. Uh, so I fall back to the individual being the smallest minority in the world. And if we're truly going to be about minority rights, then we should be about individual rights because each individual is unique. And I can just base that on genetics and, you know, environment. Nobody's genetics or environment are exactly the same. It would be very highly improbable for that to be true. So, you know, each individual is unique and should be respected as such. And, you know, that's why you'll find me on different sides of the aisle politically, you know, so it's kind of the way it is. Um, and that's just an example of how I question things. And when Christians don't question their own arguments, I can tell. And I think every atheist can tell. I don't know how Matt Dillahunty does it. Um, he deals with some of the same bullshit every week after week after week. And I'm glad he probably enjoys it because otherwise I think I would go fucking mad. But there you go. Um, pretty bit of reason. It feels truthful to admit reality to admit that you're an atheist saying I believe through faith always leaves questions all Christians have doubts but when you come out as refreshing to say it as it is free your mind look at reality belief is something from faith it will take reality and drown it uh, um, and I agree with that I, I'm going to tell you when I this is from my last week's Friday video where I talked about are you really an atheist which you know, ignited a few controversies outside of the YouTube channel. I just want to let you know that. Um, mostly, you know, people don't want to accept that there isn't a cosmic sugar daddy looking over everything. It's like I've said uh, before, the reason people get religious and stay with it is it checks off a lot of boxes for them personally. It has nothing to do with truth. It has everything to do with feelings. Um, and feelings are not right or wrong. They're just feelings. Okay. But you have a feeling that something is true is not the same as knowing something is true. Uh, and <clears throat> when I became an atheist and I began to look at reality around me, I suddenly began to realize that a lot of parts of my life I'd been neglecting because I assumed that pie in the sky by and by, you know, something will happen later on. You know, when I get to heaven, things will be made right or whatever. You know, you can overlook injustices because, you know, God will make it right later. No, not really. Uh, you know, it's like, you know, reality begins to bite you in the ass. And I think a lot of people use religion as an escape. In fact, I know probably most of them use religion as an escape from reality um, because then they don't have to deal with certain questions. I mean, if you have the belief or the non-belief in God, one of the things you immediately dismiss is afterlife. Now, there are some atheists that do believe in an afterlife. Um, they believe that there may be some sort of reality that we call spiritual afterwards. I don't have any proof of that, but um, they do. Uh, sorry for the sniffles. I'm still fighting allergies or something lately. Uh, but they don't have that reality check of, Okay, I can't see that, so I can't 
you know, feel it. There's other senses that are involved. And so once you admit that you're an atheist and you start to look at things realistically, you begin to ask yourself, is there a rational reason to take this course of action? You sit back and you think about a lot of things. Now, true, I do a lot of things about feelings. You know, I, I struggle with my feelings, as I pointed out in another comment here in a minute. Uh, but it doesn't change the fact that as an atheist, I've come to realize the reality of life a lot better. Um, you know, we need to, you know, <clears throat> not waste our time with things that are necessarily that nothing more than living a delusion so that we can feel comfortable about things. You know, we want to see babies that were died in childbirth again. We want to see old loved ones. Mom or dad was very dear to us, a, a grandma, grandpa that we really love so much and now they're gone. And we want to see them again. So we create this fantasy in our mind so that we can see them again. And to me, that doesn't bring closure. I had the greatest closure in my life with my father's death when I realized I wasn't going to see him again, ever. And suddenly he went from, I'm trying not to disappoint him, to I'm trying to live up to what he taught me as a father. And I'm going to tell you, the difference is immense and awesome. And it just, it made everything better. I finally have had closure about my father's death in the last couple of years. I mean, there's still, you know, but there's still the pining on at certain days of the year, like his birthday is coming up at the end of January. And that's always a, def a tough one because I'll think, okay, well, how old was dad, would dad have been? But he's not here, you know, and early October when he died is there. Um, I think my mother has a hard time in December because it's their, I think December 12th is their anniversary. You know, and she, she has a hard time with that. So, you know, and I don't have a problem with us having hard times at certain times of the year because we miss somebody. Um, but it, I do have a hard time with living in a delusional state just because we want something to be true. And so, yeah, you begin to see the reality of death a little bit clearer. And this also causes me to work in different ways. I became a libertarian because I believe in peace. Um, as a solution to problems. And now I'm even more so committed to it because I don't think either conservatism or liberalism, for instance, leads to peace because conservatives are try always trying to make liberals do what they want them to do. And liberals are always trying to make the conservatives do what they want to do. And nobody's aiming for what I would call a peaceful coexistence. They're trying to force the other side to do what they want them to do. And that's never going to lead to peace. Peace is when you are content not to control others, but at the same time, don't let people control you. It's this desire to control that gives us more shit and more hatred. And politics and religion are both steeped in the idea of control. And that's why I think they both need to be fought. Um, uh, that's why I'm a compassionate anti-theist. And that's why I'm a libertarian, because I, I don't believe in two forces that most people look to to try to give themselves comfort and it's both a fantasy land you know no amount of politics has ever solved the problems of the world there's always more problems and i think that's that's the real issue to a lot of people um sorry to ramble on there for a little bit uh rabid ramblings deconversion i don't want to be bitter uh you reason he's my biggest commenter um spot on with your video there are so many positives and some bitter or maybe angry thoughts of the past, but we are better than that. We now know who we are. I get angry at people trying to convert people. They go on with their persuasion for years and it's just words. Um, as for your hometown, it's yours. You are true and honest one. Your Christian friends are bound by religion. Maybe can't be by associated because of religion. We have freedom to choose friends. In the church, it's faith-based friends. So not real in the first place. I may be wrong, but or bitter, but we're getting better with age. Enjoy your every day. Um, yeah, I mean this issue of uh, bitterness and everything. I, I brought this up with my therapist on Wednesday. And I talked to her about it, and she had an interesting comment. I'm not getting it exactly here, but she said maybe those feelings of bitterness are there for a reason, and they're supposed to be there because it reminds you of what you don't want to do, and it keeps you away from what you don't 
uh, want to engage anymore. And I agree with the Christian friends thing. I think if there's one thing that religion and politics both teach you is that your friends are conditional. I know that there's a lot of people uh, out there that can cross the line of religion and politics and still be friends with somebody they vehemently disagree with um, or don't share faith with. But let's be honest here. A lot of times politics and religion are the basic reasons why a lot of friends part company. Um, and I would say, I would agree with you. Those aren't true friends. They're not real friends. They're, they're friends based on common cause and faith. And both are, are dishonest because what if you realize that the cause you're fighting for is got enough detriment to it that you don't want to fight for it anymore? Well, the people that you've been rubbing shoulders and shoulders with in the political arena suddenly turn on you because how dare you not fight with us anymore? Uh, and the same as religion, you know, how dare you not believe what we believe? And I think they're both based on this faith notion of trusting in something that they can't, you can't prove, you know, uh, and when somebody points out to you that it's bad, nothing changes. So I'm not trying to be, uh, you know, going to go over gold ground here. I'm going to probably end this video a little bit early, but, you know, the issue of bitterness is when we feel those feelings, we need to turn around and say, okay, this is something I don't want to engage anymore. What can I engage that, and I think Freebird, you really have hit something here. What can I engage instead that's a little bit more positive and goes in a better direction for me? And I think that's probably pretty true of any bad experience, but probably more so than for religion than anything else. And so I appreciate the comment and it led to a lot of thoughts and, and the thoughts on this issue have been going on as a deconversion issue now for a couple of weeks now. And I don't want to be bitter. I still don't want to be bitter, but I realize that the way to get there is to accept the reality of the, the bitter feelings and the anger sometimes and say, okay, how do I get into something that's a little bit more positive instead? And so I'm trying to come out of this depressionary hole of mine. Uh, depression never really stops me from functioning. It just kind of fucks up my relationships a lot. And, uh, you know, because I, I begin to look at them negatively. I look at my relationships negatively probably more than anything else. And that's, you know, due to past experience. So I'm trying to, to find ways to, to think better about those things. So, but thank you for the comment because I think it's an interesting deconversion stuff. I'm hoping that that particular video falls into the hands of a few more people that are bitter. Uh, because I think it would be helpful to them. Uh, I want to thank everybody this week for their comments. Uh, just a few announcements here. Um, I have the weekend off. My wife is also out of town because she's visiting a friend. Um, so I'm going to have a couple days here where I'm going to make some videos. And I think I may do maybe two or three tall tales of Jesus and maybe another uh, Bible contradiction. I'm saying that to put some pressure on myself. If it doesn't happen, understand that, you know, other things happen, but if it does happen, but what that may mean is over the next couple of weeks, you may see a tall tale of Jesus video drop and it looks like it's the exact same shirt I'm wearing and it's that same background. It looks like maybe I did them back to back and that would probably be true. Uh, but I do have to, one of the things I am going to discuss something that another YouTuber brought up this week in his own videos. And I want to dovetail off of that for our own discussion of the two or three witnesses discussion uh, with the tall tale of Jesus is the synoptic problem. So I'm going to have a video probably next week talking about the synoptic problem in the Gospels. And then I'll have another one where I address some of the text uh, with that in mind. Uh, plus, you know, looking at Bible contradictions, there's always another Bible contradiction. So uh, that's kind of, there's one that's kind of playing on my mind with another YouTuber as well, um, how the Bible contradicts archaeology on a regular basis. So there's that. Uh, in the meantime, thank you for stopping by. I appreciate every like, comment, and subscribe. And hopefully someday I can convince you to be a rabid atheist like myself. In the meantime, this is Ed Ravy, also known as a rabid atheist, signing off and wishing you a good day.